problems too. Like, I think sharks will keep eating until they pretty much pass out almost. You ever see them? I've seen a thing where they're eating a whale carcass and they just keep eating it until they get drunk and they're starting like, they're almost like a drunk but in water. You know, they're, they're going on their side and they just, and just, they just have to keep eating. And you know, that's like the imperative. Eat, 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 eat. You know, with seagulls too, you know, how fast they gulp something down, they just keep, eat, eat, eat. But, like, my feeling is, because I've had a, I've had an experience, obviously we're talking, we're using the language I, but there's been an experience with something that really felt like it took me over, which was alcoholism. Yeah? And it took me over way before the consequential level. The consequences of its taking me over was the disease and the discomfort. And then that disease and discomfort set off a drive to get relief. And then that drive to get relief proved to produce its own consequences. And then the relief basically wasn't relief, but there was an addictive quality to it, so there was nothing I could do. You know, I was powerless over that mental state, let's say. And then to have to be relieved of it, you really get to feel it by its absence. And what it feels like in its absence is that it was a possession. Really, like a straight out of the, you know, horror movie possession. Straight out of, like, exorcism possession. It was a possession. But there wasn't any one that was possessed. There was just a possibility that was possessed, which is you and I. Yeah? We're a possibility. What our mind is entertaining, you could say, opens up to what it's going to be possessed by. And then that possession uh, is the main influence in the expression. Yeah? So, I would say we're just a form of expressing. We believe that it's me expressing and you expressing, but I would say we're just a form that expression moves through. Expressions find uh, a sense of completion by moving through us. They can't turn into a form. Greed, you can't see greed. Greed doesn't appear to be like six foot five and, you know, wearing a suit. But it appears to us, yeah? It has an opportunity to express. And I feel there's a lot of uh, mental impulses seeking expression. Now, you're going to get a certain uh, flavor of them or a certain uh, paradigm of them in the being possessed by the idea that the mind is a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. I would say that sets you up for a, a very finite, uh, let's say, repository of expression. Yeah? Very finely. We see them, we see their expressions all day. We have a hard time seeing it from us, but we can see it from others very much. So that guy's an asshole and super greedy and they're totally into themselves and they're arrogant they're like this. We're very clear when it's not on us, you know? So, but those forms, those mental winds seem to have a drive to express. And they find expression through us and what's amazing is, there's a certain frame, let's say I call it self-centeredness, that produces a certain uh, flow of mental states that can arise. Like jealousy, greed, feeling less than, hate, malice, envy, all this stuff. And the frame is really what gen allows all that generation to occur. Without the frame of self-centeredness, what would be expressing as mental states would be different. Yeah? But with the frame of self-centeredness, that defines the basic product line that are going to move through you. Because you're obviously going to be seeing everything from the point of view that you're the seer. So the frame sets a reality that isn't so, and that reality produces effects that aren't so. But after it leaves the first step of the making of the reality of subject-object is you as the subject, everything is the object, if that's not seen, then what appears from that is going to be more difficult to see as not being so. Because it's going to really feel like it's so to you. Seriously. To try to, to try to make something not real in this second point, you know, you as the, as the one that's doing it or being done to, try to make that unreal without, making, without seeing this is unreal is ridiculous. Because 
when you try to make this unreal, it's real as real can be. Just like if you have a belief that you're a fraud, but you don't want to be one, then you'll feel like one thousands of times. So the idea of being a fraud is a no-no to the head, so it doesn't want to feel like that, and it feels like it constantly. When it walks in rooms, any times it's in a position, oh, you're a fraud again, you're a hypocrite, you're doing this and that. Yeah? So, when this is set, self-centeredness is set, which is unreal, then other things that are unreal appear, appear to be really real to you. Yeah? So the drive when it, it's something I don't want to be real to me arises, I want to make it unreal. Which does what? It actually gives it more reality. Yeah. It's, I, it's not real, but I give it reality. But I give it reality from this being real. So to work on the second knot, without checking the first knot out, you're going to be busy tying and untying knots constantly. Yeah? You'll untie this one, and then this one will tie, and that one, and self can't get out of self. So it's a pointless endeavor. And it's going to be pointless from the first step to the 800th step. It's just a matter of when the mind recognizes it. If it recognizes it at the first step, and there's a surrender, and there's just a com like a, a collapsing of the system, then you'll start traveling lighter. If it takes you 800 examples, then you'll travel lighter then. But whenever the travel lighter stabilizes, the feeling that there is no time goes along with it, so it's not like you missed anything for the 799 examples. It's not like, oh, I wish I could have got it that first time. That doesn't have any relevance because you realize there's no time. It sort of comes with the package. Something dawns on you, and one of the major things that stripped away from what you were making, trying to make unreal, is the reality of time. Like, just see your thought system. When there's nothing that you need to do, isn't it dying to do something? Isn't it telling you, look around, there must be something I need to do. What am I missing? I know it has some importance for later or before. It's got, it's, so the thought system is totally structured in time. So we can't see this moment and relax in it. It sees this moment as only a moment that's preceding something or coming after something. <clears throat> it can never th think of it as the moment because the thinking is of time. Yeah? So when the mind thinks about this moment, it infuses time in it. If there's thinking going on, and the thinking, the thought system is dominating your attention and interest, you, in all intents and purposes, are in the reality of time. So the thoughts are never about this moment. They can't capture this square. They, because they're made up, they're comprised of the past square and the projection about the future square. So every time you want to be here, yeah, as this thought of Paul, which is totally of time, there's no way it can be here because that here isn't here. It's made up of there and then. Yeah. So no matter how much you try to think yourself into the moment, every thought is about is really thinking yourself out of the moment. Yeah. You're thinking yourself out of this moment and you're thinking yourself into a mental moment. And the mental moment is what you really want to escape from and you can't escape from something that's not so. Any attempt to get out of what you're not in is, is, is like living as if you're in it. Okay, that's the fucking truth. When you're trying to get out of self, that's, how, that's what it looks like to be in self. Because you, there's no way it can look like you're in self because you're not in self. Yeah? It can only look like it to you. Yeah? And the best way it looks like it is when you're trying to get out of it all day. <laughs> you have to check it out. Check the mind out. <laughs> yeah? It will reveal itself. The, the structure of conditional mind is a structure. It's built. It's built on an assumption, and then another assumption, and then another assumption, and then another assumption, and then it just rips on that. It just goes off. But without the first few assumptions as its false base, it, can't, it has nothing to stand on. We're not trying to turn down the volume or lessen the quantity of all of its yapping and selfing. We're just questioning its base. Which is, am I that which is doing this, or am I that that it's talking about? <clears throat> am I the product?
product of the thought system, or am I the, the doer of the thought system? Am I the producer of the thoughts, or am I the product of the thoughts? Okay? If I'm not the producer of the thoughts, what happens? It's sort of like you've been slaving away in a factory because you thought it was yours, you realize it's not yours, you leave the factory. You take a very long lunch break. <laughs> there's no need to be there anymore because there's nothing to do with you. Yeah. Literally nothing to do with you. It has tons to do with AU, but nothing to do with you. <clears throat> and it's really clean. When your interest and attention leaves something, there's not a giant... Uh, it's not like a heroic adventure to pull you away from this incredible gravitational pull of this powerful something. It's not you. And then the attention and interest never looks back, basically. It just goes. It's a, the mind looks back. The conditional mind, oh. And then the attention and interest and habit will go back there. <coughs> but if you realize I'm not that, it's like a, a little tug on the leash. The dog of interest and attention starts smelling. Oh, this is about me. <laughs> and then you keep going. It keeps walking. Oh, this is about them and me. No, nope, they just pull the leash a little bit. And after a while, it just keeps walking. It doesn't stop and smell shit and everything like that. Just find the signature of piss and, oh, yes, I was here once before. No. Yeah? You're just like a... You'll find out what you like, really. And when it's... Either it comes in like an avalanche or a drip, drip, drip... The mind is going to be very surprised when it tries to receive this new information, which is more flow-like, yeah? More like a flow. It's going to have a <coughs> difficult time putting it in the boxes that it has you in, yeah? All the old ideas and the beliefs, all the structured idea of you, <coughs> yeah, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. When this starts flowing, in, when life starts revealing itself as you're living it, that stuff runs into those boxes, yeah? They're like cardboard. The water just wetens them and they just start collapsing, yeah? Now, if the mind has a, <coughs> a love or a cherishing of that, <coughs> it's going to feel a little grief and mourning for a while. But as soon as it gives up with that old lover, which was nothing, and starts feeling the love of what's actually happening, it quickly forgets any loyalty to that, yeah? So you may have an old idea, like, <clears throat> I'm never going to be physically well. And then life just keeps telling you you're physically well. And you may need someone who knows you to say, Hey, Paul, you got this old habit of thinking you're really sick. I see you as a very healthy person. And you're shutting that down. No, no, I'm right. I'm a very sick person. I know that. <clears throat> Sooner or later, there's a possibility, Hey, I'm not that. Nor am I a well person. That's the beauty of it. See, to be a sick person causes the really, really tasty to become a well person. Yeah? So you have to define something as so, so that you can get into not making it not so. Oh, Jesus, I am really like this, and I don't want to be like that. And you've got to see, it always generates that engine of desiring to become. It's all the mind's doing every day. It's, dark, it's either desiring to unbecome something it believes it is, like I'm a loser or this, or it's desiring to become something it wants to be. But it can never complete its mission because it can't become a self. Be it a loser or a winner. It can't be a loser self. It can't be a winner self. It can only appear to be <coughs> through the activity of selfing. It can only appear to be a self. It can never actually come into fruition and be a self. So it's always going to be unfulfilled. Always. It's like the perfect addiction, addiction, really. And I really believe all our addictions are just reflections of the addiction of mind to the idea of being a self. Just like when I used to shoot coke, there wasn't a time where I had shot enough coke. And I was totally satisfied, and I never shot coke again. Coke, thank you very much. I've reached my base, and now I'm just fine. No, it produces an addiction, yes, that has no end to it. So if the mind's attempting to become something which it can't be, and the fact is it can't be that, then it's all it can do is keep trying to become it. Yeah? 
What's the mind doing all day in something? Exactly that. It's trying to become something that it isn't, or unbecome something that it thinks it is. Now, if it can't complete itself, what, what, what basically happens? It never ends, does it? It just keeps going. It can't, it can't have climax. It can't come to completion. It can't come to fulfillment. Because it can't be so what it wants to be so. So it's in a, it's in a constant state of unfulfillment or agitation. Yeah? Never, never with the ability to get completion. That's why it's stretched out in time. So it can live in hope. That maybe one day, because in this moment it's obvious, you can't become a self. So it says, well maybe, it won't be so obvious if I have 80 years to live. Maybe in the 75th year I'll become an authentic self. Who knows? Yeah? So the, it just keeps driving the addiction with the hope that one day it's going to be fulfilled, but not this day. Not this moment. Not this hour. Yeah? But one day, one day, one day. <clears throat> it's never going to come to an end. Yeah? Why is our interest and attention wedded to it? Why is our interest and attention wedded to that activity? Because we believe, the mind has come to believe that it is a self. Yes? It wants to become a better self. So, the, the state of unfulfillment has been glossed over by an already fulfilled thing, you are a self already. That's just trying to become a better self. Or trying not to be a bad self. Yes? So, the whole premise of it keep going is that it's already so. Yet, the feeling of being a self is produced by the activity. You did not have a feeling of being a self when you were a little kid. Like when you were one years old. You grew into this drive. <clears throat> so, the selfing it produces the, this feeling of being a self, and then it's historically put to be the one that's doing the self thing. You see it? It's incredible, if you watch it. The mind's going like this, crazy. Crazy just, just can never complete, so it's always like this. But the feeling is <clears throat> that it produces this feeling of self. The feeling of being a self is you're the doer of the self thing. Well, you're what the self thing is doing too. Yeah? You don't see the bondage in that? So the activity, which is never going to cease, in a sense, already has produced its product, which is the feeling of you, that it's happening to, or you're doing it. Yeah? <clears throat> so selfing is driving me crazy, or I'm the self I've been selfing all day. Yeah? People call me a lot. I've been selfing all day. That's the product of selfing, the feeling that it was you doing it. Yeah? Or it's selfing, the selfing is driving me crazy. That's the product of the selfing. The feeling of being the subject that the activity of selfing is driving crazy. <clears throat> That's the self thing. That's the product. Yeah? So, when it's something that produces an effect, the effect feels like it's the producer. Yeah? So, as soon as you keep listening to this, and it produces this, but this is placed here as if it's the one that's doing it. Yeah? It's a beautiful system. <clears throat> in a weird way. It's like a slinky that never runs out of stairs. Yeah? It just keeps going. Yeah? Because there's never a point where it levels out. On and on and on and on and on. Because as soon as it produces a feeling, it, you think you're the one. Yeah? We're not that. It's just a movement of mind. What's allowing you to even have a sense of it is the seeing, the awareness, yeah? There's something that precedes all that mental activity. There's something that surrounds all that mental activity. What is that? What is the field of onness that there can be a sense of seeing something that's going on? Are we actually the seer as what's going on? This is a part of what's going on, yes? This is the manifestation, yeah? This is manifesting, don't you feel? The body seems to have grown, eroding, doing this. So it's constantly in manifesting. What's manifesting can't see what's manifesting, yeah? What's manifesting can't see what's manifesting. It's part of the manifesting, yeah? It, it's part of the content. It can't leave the content and 
see the context. If we could see the context, that would be part of the content. There's no way you, as this, can see what's seen. There's no you, as this, that can hear what's hearing. There's no you, like, as this, that can feel what's feeling. Yeah. What's feeling can't be felt. What's hearing can't be heard. What's seen can't be seen. That's the beauty of it. If it could be seen, <clears throat> it would be manifested. Manifesting. It would be an object. We're not looking for an object. Like St. Francis says, what we're, what's looking is what we're looking for. What's looking is not an object. We keep looking for it as an object. That's why we're missing it, in a sense. Yeah? Because what's looking is what we're looking for. But the you will take what's looking and make it into an object called awakening or a realization or awareness. Something that I get to make me as this better. Yeah? But he's saying what's looking. He's not saying who's looking. He says what's looking is what you're looking for. What's looking is not of thingness. Yeah? It's not of thingness. Like Jesus said, supposedly said, you're in this world, but you're not of it. This world is of thingness, yes? We're not of thingness. So we can't see it from a thing to a thing. We realize, I can't see it, and that's the seeing of it, in a sense. Yeah? The seeing of it is the emphasis of you trying to... See, when the emphasis is on you, and you get to the point where I can never see it, hallelujah! Because suddenly your interest and attention may leave this failed system, and now you're on the side of the seeing. And there's no... And that's the solution, that you can never see it. Because then you're the seeing of that. Yeah? You're the seeing of it. You're not... That's also why it's so beautiful when the system collapses, because your interest and attention can leave that dead horse, and it just moves to, quote-unquote, the other side of the ledger, and it moves to the seeing, not the seer. Not the object that thinks it's the seer, but the seeing. Yeah? So it's, it's a habitual nesting or landing on things, interest and attention, suddenly lands on no thing, and it recognizes its home. The home is of no thing. Where, do you see attention? Do you see awareness? Do you see interest? Can you see it? Do you have a certain amount of... Have you, you know, I may have gone to a movie last night. I you know, ran out of my interest. I have no interest now in the next two days. Can't wait. I spent too much on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. Yeah? I got a little box of interest. I put them in an envelope every day. This is Wednesday's interest and attention. I'm not giving you know, much. I can't spend. I don't have much. You know? There's no quantity to it. You can't feel it, pick it up. Yes? The interest and attention is of no thing. And when it rests on no thing, there'll be a... Those two no-seeing no wires, when they hit, there'll be a spark of recognition. The mind will recognize its own nature, or quality of its nature, which is of no thingness, not of thingness. You know? And then all the meaning that this thing, and therefore every other thing's been drenched in, the meaning of being real, gets a little bit wrung out, yeah? You just don't take it as seriously as you once did. Like it says in recovery, <coughs> in Rule 62, you know, don't take yourself so seriously. That's exactly what happens. You don't take us self seriously. It's in, if you don't take yourself seriously, that's another form of taking it seriously, yeah? If you try to get out of self and you believe it's so... That's another form of being quote unquote in self, yeah? But you don't take us self seriously works really well. Because as soon as the self isn't called yours and it's just A, you'll see it it's just a run of a mill production of a mental process. I swear to God. <coughs> it's like a stock version. It's like a stripped down version of a Ford Falcon, basically. It has that smell, it curt turns, it's really nothing special. And you're basically in a giant parking lot full of four thousands. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I love this message. If it's just entertained, what would look like would take maybe years of practice to get some relief, the relief can come flooding in with absolutely doing nothing. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. And in that, you realize 
the scales of balance here. There's so much emphasis on doing and having because it always emphasizes the doer and the doer. Yes? The doer and the haver. The whole point is in all doing and having, claiming it, to emphasize you're the doer and you're the haver. Yeah? It's all used here. All the activities are used as like mirrors to reflect the self. Yeah? To blind the mind from the seeing of no-thingness to seeing of things. And then in all the seeing of things, there's an assumption that there's a thing that's seeing all the other things. Yeah? And then all the eyes in this room forget that they're the eye. <coughs> they identify as a you and they call it me. Each eye in this room is calling it me. Each eye in this room is calling it me. Yeah, each eye. <clears throat> and every time I look at you, I never see me there, ever. I always see a you. There's only one me in this huge equation. I see constantly tons of things all day, but there's only one me seeing it all. But in fact, there's only I seeing it. Yeah? If you want to call I awareness or consciousness, everyone right now, I is seeing. Yeah? And if we're looking at a body, everyone's having the same hit. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. From John's position, John is the eye. The eye is seeing this you. Yeah? What happened when I can recognize you, if there's five yous, hundreds of yous, eight billion yous, I never get confused. I know every one of you is a you. Everyone. I have no confusion about it. Yeah? The eye sees a you. No confusion. What happens with this you? Why is this you crowned me? Why does this you get the special, very special, very unique little crown in this whole bunch of views, the one me, and now the interest and attention are like enslaved to that one me, when they could give a shit about other you? But they don't give, it's not about giving a shit about this you. This you is a me, baby. This is me. It's not a me, it's me. And it deserves all the attention I can give it. Yeah? <coughs> oh, yeah. That's fucking crazy. What happens if the you me's dropped off? There's a you, there's a you, there's a you, there's a you. There's a you. So really, if the eye is seeing this as a you, yeah, and it's very clear the eye ain't the you, the only time it becomes unclear is when the mind says, all right, I'm going to wed the eye with the you and call it me. Yeah? If you can have that a wedding annulled, yeah? divorced from that idea, and the eye is the eye and the you is the you, everything gets very clear. Yeah? Blue is blue and red is red. Things get obvious. It's only when the I <coughs> gets claimed by the mental process and called me, that everything changes. Your interest and attention can't find its way home to nothingness. It always ends up being perched on this idea of being a body. Yeah? You're not involved in other people's thoughts, but <coughs> when I called your thoughts, it's amazing. Yeah? When you feel you're the thinker of the thoughts, you can be in hell with the other person, yeah? Recognize, like, you have been with someone and they're flipping out and you would sound asleep. You could give a shit, really. They're going to... And you're... Sleeping, you know? Don't you understand? No, I actually don't. What the hell's happening? It's toasty in here. It's beautiful, everything. We had a nice meal. You don't understand what's going to happen to me next week. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't have an idea. I'm too busy thinking what's going to happen to me next week. <laughs> it just creates a huge separation, yeah? But if, let's, let's give credit to where credit's due. There's the appearance of yous, yeah? And it's nice to take care of this you, as long as it doesn't turn into me, yeah? It's nice. It's, sort of a, it's like a job, in a way. You've got a little bit of maintenance every day. It's like living in a condo, in a sense. You don't own it. You don't have the, the deed. You're just like, it's like a, like a hotel. You moved in, and it's just nice to keep, you know. I don't really have to upkeep it, because it's not me, but you tend to like to, you know, make it more comfortable, make you feel better, and stuff like that, yeah? But as soon as it becomes me, I've noticed when I try to do things for this body as me, I usually get the opposite effects that I was looking for. 
Like, I'll spend tons of money. Like, I did this once. It blew my mind. I had this, um, I had trouble with my digestion. There was a story about trouble with my digestion since I was young. So, <clears throat> I was doing a lot of things because it sounded noble. Yeah, so I, it's my, it's me. I better take care of me. You know, me is in trouble. Me isn't feeling good. And me wants to feel better. And so I set out on a school. It sounded very noble. And so I found, I went through a lot of acidophilus and probiotics, and I found the best one. Of course, it's in Whole Foods, you know, Whole Paycheck, really. <coughs> so it was like 40 something dollars for like oh, two weeks or something. It was milk from Canada with like 50 billion live, <laughs> lovely cells, lovely beneficial flora cells. And they, you know, I said, yeah, maybe that's what I need. So I drank this stuff religiously, kicking down the cash for a year and stuff. So I decided, Jesus, you know, I'm feeling a little better, but not, nothing radical has changed. I'm going to, so I got in touch with Smoky Mountain Labs, a very famous lab in the East Coast, where they study shit, really. So you send your, you send your stool there, and if, <coughs> they, they'll analyze it for you, and they send you a printout how much you want to analyze it. So I checked a lot of boxes. I'm going for the <laughs> extra turbo investigation. Yeah, 500 bucks, yeah. And, you know, diligently collected my shit for three days. <laughs> sent, it, sent it to uh, Virginia, and yeah, I couldn't wait for the uh, returns, you know. <laughs> kept, drinking my, kept drinking my stuff, you know, 48 bucks a week, drinking it, drinking it. And I get the return, I'm reading it, and they say, all right, there's no parasites in there. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that. And they said, uh, there's absolutely no sign of any beneficial flora in your intestines. I go, Jesus Christ, I've been dunk paratrooping like 50 billion a day. I mean, what happened to D-Day? Where are you? Where are the, where are the signs? Don't we have like a beachhead or something? Isn't it like 2%, maybe a half percent? None. There's absolutely no sign of anything beneficial in your intestine. I go, what the hell? What happened is, there was something in there, these two bacteria, that were feasting on... The freaking probiotics. That was like the... F they couldn't have... It was like them going to Tiffany's. You know, you couldn't have given them a better fucking... And I was pouring their food in every day for two years with the hope that it was going to produce a really good effect and it was producing the exact opposite. You know, when I give advice to a you, my advice is so much better. Really, I can see what you need really clearly. But as soon as... The confusion doesn't come from you, it comes from me. The me fucking all oh, bets are off. Because the me has its own agenda. Its own agenda is to survive and appear to be a me. And if it appears better to be a me if it's sick, you better believe it's going to be sick. If, it's, if it has a better story of me being a victim, it ain't going to let go of that victim. No freaking way. You can bring all the gold in the world, and when it weighs it, no. This is much more valuable. And you have no idea this, this agenda is running. At the same time, you have your little noble fantasy of, I just want to improve myself. You know, it sounds really good, but it doesn't work. You know? It's, I could run something like I used, when I came into recovery, I spent two years in a drug and alcohol program. And when I left that place, <clears throat> I had to admit that my life was better with them running it than it ever did with me running it. Yeah? Because they weren't me. They were un actually disinterested yous that knew how to treat a life that, that and I was involved with at, to the you. Yeah? They knew how to treat the you better than me ever did. Because I thought I was I. Yeah? They saw me as a you, and they saw me as a junkie, and they were as clear as clear can be. And they knew exactly what I needed as a you. But to me, it didn't make any sense. I should be free. I should want to do what I want to do. <laughs> this is just clarifying one little point. Never the, tw never the twain should these meet. The you and the I don't meet and become a me. Yeah? When there's the recognition of the movement of I, yeah? And the mind recognizes it and says, oh, that's me, yeah? That's the delusion or the bondage of self. That's exactly the whole premise. There's the recognition or sentience of I, 
there's a sense of the consciousness, the mind says, you know what? I'm claiming that. I'm going to wed the I, which is no thingness, to this you, which is thingness, and I'm going to give the I's qualities and make them an attribute of the you by calling it me. And from there, for, there's very there's a very unclear situation of what's happening here because it's not seeing as it's happening through you, it's seeing as it's happening to me. Yeah? I don't see life as happening through all these yous, I see it as it's happening to me. Yeah? In the midst of all these yous where all these expressions are flying all day, I'm the one <coughs> fixed reference, I'm like the one flagpole stuck in all this and it's me. The country, the sovereign country of me. <clears throat> and there's no freedom as the me. This isn't about how the me is going to get free. You know, in five years or three years or eight retreats or sign up for these 12 books every month. And, yeah, the me is never going free. It's all about the I becoming free from the me by realizing it's not a you. Yeah? <clears throat> when it realizes it's not the body, then it can see I'm not that me that takes itself to the new body, and then I is sensed as I and I alone. <clears throat> and it's expressing through you. Just like all these other mental winds are expressing through you. But this is quite different, because this is like the sky where those wind, winds blow through, yeah? This is like the context <clears throat> that allows all those currents of winds to occur. This is like the space that all of that, that we call life, is seen in, yeah? It's like a living light that illuminates whatever arises, yeah? That's what I see the eye as, but I never see it as that. I see it as that by moving, by its manifesting. When it comes through, there's a recognition or a sense of some of its <coughs> forms of expression, and it intimates what that may not be, or may be. Yeah. <coughs> well, getting fired up. So good. The energy of talks, I don't know. They don't really go well with bodies at times, especially bodies that are getting older. <laughs> the energy just moves through. It can be so strong. And whatever is off gets amplified. Yeah? Whatever is a little bit not working at maximum potential gets amplified. It's sort of like, in a sense, the expression as energy really shows you that you're not that which it's moving through. Yeah? yeah? So it's, you can see its effects here, but you can also intimate its source by feeling it move through the body. You can intimate it. And you know the intimation of it, it is of no thingness. It is of no quality. It is of no concept. There's nothing, it can never be found, and there's no way in hell you could do anything to get closer to it. And conversely, you, there's no way in hell you could do anything to get away from it. It's all like a pantomime. It's all an act. All the movements towards and from that we put so, so much significance in our life, at the end of it all, nothing's moved at all. There's not been anything that ever happened in a sense. set up just being a, a moment in a certain particular event can spread out as the base of all moments, yeah? You'll be the underlying base or the underlying medium that all moments seem to pass through, yeah? 
And so its one constant influence can become influential in all the comings and goings, and all the changes, and all the variations. You can have this one constancy being like leaking into all the specifics of each little moment. Yeah? And afterwards, so not so being so drawn into all the specifics, but to also always sense the space that they're appearing in. Because the space is always there throughout all the comings and goings. Yeah? All the comings and goings, <coughs> this never comes and goes. It's just, it's, it's like the medium. It's like uh, what's allowing everything to arise and depart. <clears throat> Can you imagine if your intention and interest, the eye, the single eye, didn't leave that ball? The game would be totally different here. Maybe you wouldn't be looking for something to make you feel great. Maybe all these imperatives or drives of this constant seeking would be Distinguished, that this thing was extinguished. Yeah? It would just chill out. Why? With no thought or effort on your part. It would just be mind coming out of this mental yoga posture, which creates a whole other way of. When you're like this, there's a form of receiving. Yeah? This is how you have to receive. Yeah? Your embrace would be based on a withholding. Everything would be based on how you receive life or participate in life based out of this posture. Yeah? And you would imagine taking this to be so, you'd have tons of opinions about all that as being so. But all of that is not so. It's based on this. When this comes out, let's see how life is then. This isn't a place to judge it. You have to first see who's the judger. You have to first see what's the assumption all this opinion is based on. If the assumption isn't sound, all that isn't sound. When I saw this, all right, here's the message, you're not this. What the, the mind can't receive the message easily as this. It, the message sort of falls on it, yeah, and then it, goes, and it entertains. I may not be this, and then while it entertains, I may not be this, it comes out, yeah, and then you know it, you know the problem by the solution. When the mind unravels or comes out of that posture, then you know, oh, it was that posture. The posture that was defining me. The posture that was making everything appear to seem to be that way. It was the posture that was dictating how I saw life and me and you. And how I forget the I all fucking day. It's very easy to forget the I if it's called me. Very easy. All the attention goes on to me. And there's no, and the me is the I, in a sense. It's covering the I. But the me is like a vacuum. It sucks up all the interest and attention... And instead of being in this incredible swirl of movement and expressing, it goes into this like black hole area of self. Yeah. It's like a, it sucks all the juice. You know, it's like you know, one setting, one sunset is enough. One, you know, one nice thing is oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't see how self can get out of self. That's one of my favorite axioms out of recovery. I don't know where it originated, but that would always rang really true to me. How can a product of a system get out of the system that produces it? It's just impossible. Like Einstein said, how can what caused the problem come up with a solution to it? <laughs> you can't rely on what's causing the problem to solve it. <laughs> it just makes a lot of sense to me. So self can't get out of self. It's like that slinky. Self is trying to get out of self and into another self all day, isn't it? Like 50, 60 different selves all day. Something reminds you, oh, you're a fucking really nasty person. I don't want to be a nasty person. But you are. It just slinks all day. It's a never-ending mental staircase. <laughs> you're hoping that one day I'm going to find an authentic self and then the, the slinky's going to stop. It can't stop. Because there is no authentic self. It's all becoming, unbecoming, becoming, unbecoming, becoming, unbecoming, becoming, unbecoming. Is it anything? No. It's seemingly becoming and seemingly unbecoming. Seemingly unbecoming. What so? The centeredness doesn't, isn't, isn't an activity. Yeah? 
It expresses in manifestation, but it's not an activity. Its nature isn't to become fulfilled. It's already so. It has no agenda to reach anywhere. It's everywhere. It's in a whole different, like, dimension than here. It's not, there's no need to complete itself. It's not here, oh, I got a mission and I'm working, I'm going to purify and give up. It's not coming to fruition. It's not like a, a fruit that's ripening. Yeah? It's already complete in and of itself. The mind, when centered on that, finds rest. Mind, when centered on self, is self-centeredness. It's self-seeking and frightened. It's the same mind. If it's resting on self, it's self-seeking and frightened. Why? Because it's relying on something unreliable. When it's resting on what's reliable, what happens? It can enjoy peace of mind. Yeah? It can actually be here because it's not wedded to the system that is producing there and then all day. Yeah? It can be here. I just, I don't know, to me, a here is more than enough. Why do I want to think of a future here? Yeah? Because when I arrive there, it's going to be here anyway. Every time I arrive at these great destinations, it's the same place I was at when I left. <laughs> what happens? Like a giant to-do list. All right, now I got that. Let's forget all about that and move on to the next thing I'm, I'm going to forget when I arrive at. And then let's move on to the next thing. Because isn't it amazing when you usually arrive, you forget. Before you seem to arrive, you're thinking constantly. The mind's thinking constantly about it. When you arrive in, to the move to start thinking about something else. It's this here there modality always. Yeah. One kid, no, two kids. Yeah. House, big a house. You know. Enlightenment, double enlightenment. I want the. I want. I don't want to know the absolute. I want to know the absolute of the absolute. And then I want to know the absolute of the absolute of the absolute. I want to be the first person to be there when they disappear. <laughs> I want to be there when I experience my own absence. Ah, yeah. Oh, I, really, I really appreciate Paul by its absence. I do. Well, I was fine before I came in here. I was thinking the whole cold. I think this cold. Jesus Christ. Well, any questions for today? Thanks for having a lot of people showing up, John. We, I had to call all these people to make it look like we have something going on. <laughs> John's visiting from Massachusetts. I mean, it could have just been me and him. It would have been... Yeah, who knows? No, no, no. No questions. So Sunday, next Sunday, we're in Berkeley. 7 o'clock. We're going to be at that open, cir uh, open oh, circle. circle. Open circle place. On Cedar? You know yeah, where it is? I, 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 I think that. The next one, 24 Cedar. 1924. Awesome. You were there. We went there last year. Or two years, three years ago. Yeah. So you're not going to be here next Saturday? Uh, yeah, we're going to be here Saturday. It doesn't take me two days to get to Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave early, yeah. i got to sort of acclimate myself to Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, Berkeley. Go to some cafes. Do a Telegraph Avenue. Okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> I think I can just drive over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, we'll pass the basket then. Eh? Anybody need any shirts today, John? I'm going to give you. Did you get a shirt? Oh, I, oh, I, 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 I have it in the car.